Welcome to this video in which we will have a look at service insertion for Cisco ACI and we will consider big IP load balancers and uh, uh, ASA firewalls. We have here an application which is made out of web servers and database servers but we will focus on the web servers. As you can see there are external clients that can communicate with web servers over a contract. If we have a look at the application, it's not working. The reason is because there's no load balancer in front of the web servers. Now going back to the ACI plugin in vCenter, we can see in the contract, other than the filters configured, that, that there are no, there's no layer for layer 7 insertion configured. We could insert here the load balancer from the ACI plugin, but we will do it in a different way. First, we will verify that we have a load balancer with a management IP address configured, but nothing else. As you can see here, there are no self IPs in the load balancer, there are no virtual servers, and we will uh, see now there are no server pools and, and, and or, or pool members. Now this is the self-service portal that we will use in order to insert the layer 4, layer 7 um, um, service graph. So the only thing th this does is triggering um, a Python script. So let's first start the insertion. Oh, and as, an, as a goodie, as you can see, we have integrated it with Cisco Spark that is telling us when something happens. As I was saying before, that self-service portal triggers this script that just um, does a login into the fabric over the REST API and sends a very basic REST API call in order to insert the uh, load balancer. Everything else will be done by the orchestrator, inserting the load balancer and configuring the load balancer accordingly. Right, so if we go back to the load balancer, we will be able to see that now there are some uh, self IPs configured. Um, where are they? Oh, um, first we need to verify that uh, we are in the right partition, right? So um, as you could see, there is a new partition that has been created. And here you have the self IPs that the ACI controller configured. Now we can have a look at the virtual servers and uh, after some seconds we will see there's one of them. Behind the virtual server there has to be a server pool which is there and, behind, and the server pool is made out of one or more servers. In this case we have only one. We will see later where this address is coming from, this dot 11, because this is not static but dynamic. If we check our application, now it's working, all right. But you could say that a load balancer is not enough and that we need to have a next generation firewall in front of our application delivery controller. Well, guess what? Our um, ACI fabric is able to do that as well. As we did before, we insert the um, uh, service chain, service chain um, um, made out of, of the firewall and the load balancer, but, but before let's remove it and go back to the load balancer and verify that the config is gone. So the partition has disappeared and all the rest of the configuration should be uh, gone for good as well. Let's uh, do some checks, but everything should be empty now. No self IPs, no virtual balancers, nothing. Uh, we have an additional foul that, similarly to the load balancer, is completely devoid of any configuration other than the management IP address. No routing protocols and no access lists. So now we are ready to insert our service chain made out of the uh, next generation foul and the load balancer. So let's go for it. Let's insert it and as before, now we will have a look at the actual script that this um, PHP self-service portal triggered. Again, this is very simple. So we will see in a minute. And um, this, um, this very simple REST API call that is just telling ACI to insert a pretty fine service chain made out of the firewall and the load balancer. We can see that as well in the vCenter plugin for ACI. So here we can see that there's this chain with the firewall and the big IP inserted.
if we go back to the firewall, we will see in that I, some IP addresses have been configured now. You can see here the Excel, the internal interface have been configured. There's an access list applied to the Excel interface. And there's a routing protocol configured in this case of SPF, as we will see in a, in a sec. Those are the access lists. And there's a routing, there are routing protocol adjacencies, and OSPF routes are being learned. And as you can guess, the load balancing, the load balancer will be configured in a similar way as before with the self IPs. There, the server pool, the virtual IP address, and all what we saw before. Now we can go back to our application and verify that everything is working again. There you go, beautiful. But now the traffic is going through the file and the load balancer. So let's, we will go back to the server pool that was configured in the load balancer. If you remember, there was this dot eleven address configured. There you go. So this is actually been dynamically dynamically configured with all all the endpoints that belong to a certain endpoint. As you can see, there is only one endpoint active in this web EPG or endpoint group, and this is what the ACI controller configured in the load balancer. So. Uh, we can now start up a couple of additional virtual machines which are assigned to the same port group so that these virtual machines will belong will uh, come into that EPG into that endpoint group and then will be assigned as well to the uh, load balancing server pool we will start the web 02 and web 03 virtual machines as you are seeing now if you go back to our ACI plugin in vCenter and have a look at the web endpoint group we will see that the new servers are there there you go web 01, 02 and 03 so not that the network has seen new endpoints the new endpoints will be configured in the big IP load balancer Web02 is already there, it's dot twelve, and if we refresh again, probably Web03 will come into the picture. Here you go. So as you could see, starting new machines just triggered the automatic addition into the uh, server pool. The server admin didn't do didn't have to do anything. You could ask whether this only works for virtual machines, and the answer is absolutely not. It works with any anything. That's one of the beauties of ACI. And to demonstrate that, let's start a Linux container. Here I have a Docker 1.12 1 installation where I have configured a Mac VLAN network. As you can see here, there's the CNR underscore net network, and we will just start a container with an address of dot two eleven on that subnet, on that network. Inside of that container, I have a, a web server running which uh, will serve a similar web page. Um, by the way, in the meantime, we can start Safari in private browsing mode because I like that one to just refresh the, the pages here. Uh, one of the nice features is you can very easily disable web caching in, in this Safari uh, private browsing. So now if we go back to the ACI plugin in center, we will see that the dot .211 address is there. And if we refresh the farm, sure enough, you can see the additional Linux container being automatically added to the list of servers. Let's refresh a couple of times until we get the Linux container. There you go, we were lucky. On the first go, we already get the page served by our Linux container. Now we will focus on the micro-segmentation characteristics of Cisco ACI. You might have noticed that we have a, an additional endpoint group which is called out of service. This is what we call a micro segmentation EPG or a dynamic EPG because uh, VMs are assigned to this EPG dynamically based on its attributes. These attributes could be IP address or something else. In this case, it's just the name, as you might have seen. Every machine that ends with OOS for out of service will be assigned to that EPG. 
So now we can go to a virtual machine, for example, let, let's take Web03 and add this suffix OOS to its name. We will see how the virtual machine moves to this micro segmentation EPG leaving the web server EPG and as a consequence it will be removed from the load balancing server farm as well. So let's go to our application, let's check the endpoints inside of our web server's EPG and as you can see there's only web 01 and 02, web 03 is not there anymore because now it's in this uh, out of service EPG. And again as a consequence if we have a look at the um, F5 server pool it'll, it will not be there. You could use this for putting some servers in maintenance or maybe because some servers have been compromised from a security perspective and shouldn't be able to communicate anymore with the rest of its of their peers. And obviously whenever you're done or whenever you have remediated the attack on that server you can put it back online and that's as easy as modifying its name again and removing the OOS prefix. No change on the IP address, no change on the port group assignment. So now after changing the name it's the same thing, we will go back to our EPG and we will verify uh, that now Web03 is uh, not anymore in the out of service EPG. There you go, this is empty now and uh, it's uh, going to be there in the web server EPG. If everything works and it does, there you go. Let's verify the load balancer and our server farm is again complete with all four servers. Let's talk about the uh, property of ACI that all this configuration, be it the network config, the load balancing config and the ASA config, the firewall config, is in one single place. As you could see we have removed the um, firewall and the load balancers. So uh, we have removed then configuration from the big IP and the ASA appliances. As a precaution, we will snapshot the complete tenant that we have. That, by the way, has other applications that you, as you ha might have seen in the GUI. You can see that in ACI you can snapshot and obviously restore specific tenants without affecting the rest. Now we can delete it, and we are able. We are, we are going to be able to restore it. We will not use the snapshot though. We could but we will use uh, a REST API call so that you can see how easy it is doing these things. Let's go to our Postman REST client and now the only thing we need to send is a config that we uh, saved already in advance. So it's two REST calls we need to send, the login that you just saw and now this second call with the full configuration here. So let's send it, we got a 200 back, which is a good thing. And now we can go back to the ACI GUI and see whether the config is there. So the tenant is here and there you go everything there and as you might have seen there is already a, a different application being deployed with its cor corresponding load balancer. Ours wasn't, but we can easily deploy it again with our Python scripts from this self-service portal. So let's do it again here and as you could expect um, the same magic that we saw before will happen again. The predefined service chain that was stored in the, in, in the APIC will be now deployed to the firewall and to the load balancer. We will see configuration coming up here in, in some seconds. Let's see. So there you go. There are the first servers coming up, the next will, will come in, uh, in in some time, but with the first server we can already verify, verify that our application is up and running. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.